All right, welcome back for part six of our exciting game. Although it's not so exciting just yet, but hopefully you are excited for uh, all the cool things we're gonna learn. Um, I think you can take what you uh, learn here and apply it to other games. You're gonna learn a lot of cool concepts, so uh, stay excited. Anyways, last time we uh, set everything up so where I press Control Enter, you know everything's lined up properly. The you know game starts here and it's just push start is flashing on and off. Now I want to be able to start the game, and when I press enter, which will be our start button, I want it to show Bandit Bill, this mean looking guy here. He doesn't look very nice. So how do we do that? It's not too difficult actually. What we need to know first of all is what position this movie clip here is going to be when it shows Bandit Bill. So to do that, I'm going to do a few things. I'll zoom out a little bit so I can see more of my stage. And that's control minus in case you didn't know. And I'm also going to lower the alpha just so I can see where things are as I move them. So I can tell, you know, I can still see this. Obviously, this is not the right position. So I'm move it up right to where Nintendo disappears. And now I see Bandit Bill right in the center. This looks like the correct position, which is a y axis position of negative 621. We go a little higher, yeah, 620, 620 or 621 looks pretty good. So we'll try that out and hopefully it will work out. I'm gonna press Control Z right now and put it back to where I found it. Again, you don't have to because we typed code that would automatically put it in the right spot, but I wanna try to keep things consistent. So I'm gonna bump that back up to 100, go here to my actions, and we're gonna create a new condition. And the condition is when the person presses the enter key, do whatever I say. So we're gonna go right after line eight, press enter a few times, type in if, which is the beginning of the condition. If the condition itself is going to be key dot is down. Notice that a K is capitalized. There's a dot here, it's all one word, or they're all stuck together. Is down has a capital D, so it's humpbacked. The first letter word is the first letter of the first word is lowercase. Second word is capitalized. The first letter is capitalized. So, uh, open parentheses. Now we got to type in the key code. Now each key has its own code, but we can just type in key dot enter, and that will work just fine. Close parentheses twice because we opened one here and here. So we're going to close them. Open curly bracket, skip a line, and close curly bracket. Now whatever I type in here is gonna happen when I press the enter key. So I want it to go to that y-axis position we mentioned earlier. So I'm gonna say stage zero one, background dot underscore alpha, excuse me, what am I saying? Dot underscore y equals, and if I remember correctly, it was negative 620, 620, the semicolon. So as soon as I run my movie, press enter and you can see there's Mr. Bandit Bill. The problem however is, I don't know if you caught that, but it's fading in, right? If I press enter, Bandit Bill is still fading in and I don't want that. I want him to be completely clear and scary in my face as soon as I press enter. So we need to somehow bypass this whole fade in thing um, when I press the enter key. So. The easiest way to probably do that would be to press enter and uh, in that same condition, we're gonna type in stage zero one background dot underscore alpha equals 100. And what that's going to do is as soon as I press the enter key, it's gonna bump that right up to 100 regardless of where it was earlier. And this condition where it's checking to see if alpha is less than 100, Alpha is now going to be 100 and it's going to skip all that. It's not going to even do that. So uh, it will stop trying to increase the alpha level. So if I run my movie now, even if I press enter right away, Bandit Bill is there. Scary. The other thing we want to do is have these letters come in one at a time like a typewriter, just like the original game. You're going to hate me for this. I should have given this some forethought. And uh, what I'm about to show you, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. I'm just gonna do this way, this particular way you're about to see. And, uh, but if you have a better way of doing it, go ahead and do that. I just think this is kind of cool. You get to play with the uh, timeline and all that fun stuff, or if you think that's fun. 
What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go inside MC Background. So I'm going to double click and we are now inside MC Background. I scroll down a bit and I can see Bandit Bill here. Now keep in mind right now I'm inside the movie clip MC Background. We got to be careful not to move things around here because this will impact the, uh, the actual gameplay because we're inside the movie clip itself. So be careful, make sure your background layer is locked. Um, last time we created a new layer, if memory serves me, we called it, yeah, I think we called it start. If we didn't call it start, I can't remember, we may have called it block or something like that. If we did, just name that layer start. That's the layer that had this push start button on it. There, so um, make sure that's called start. Go down here, create another new layer and call this one block. Why are we making a block? Well, we're going to go down here and uh, right where it says banded bill, we're going to draw a rectangle. Make sure you check under properties and you want to have these settings. You want the stroke to be transparent. That means I'm going to select this little transparent button and the fill is going to be black so that it matches up with my background color. I'm going to draw a box over banded bill and all of that text. And if I select it, you can see that it has this little polka dot thing here. Make sure you lock that start button too. I didn't mention this earlier. Let's lock that too, just in case. I don't wanna mess with that layer. I want everything to say okay. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this to a movie clip. So I'm gonna right click this, go to convert to symbol, and we're gonna call this um, you know, block, uh, typewriter block. That's what we can type it. That's easy to remember. Um, and uh, we'll type MC at the beginning just so we're consistent. Typewriter block. Hopefully I spelled that right. Um, so there we go. The registration was top left corner. To be honest, it doesn't too matter too much on this, but there we have it. What we're going to do is we're going to go inside of this movie clip. But rather than going inside of it from the library, we're going to go inside of it from the movie clip itself. So that way we can still see what's going on out here, but we are currently inside MC Typewriter, which is inside MC Background. So what we're going to do, this is really silly, I know, but this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to go to the selection tool and I'm going to cut away pieces of this text. Now I only want to see the B and I cut away too much. So using a combination of control Z to at least eyeball it and try to get close to the right place and the brush tool which is right over here. I'm going to go to this brush tool. We're going to add and remove pieces of this so that it goes forward one block at a time. The other thing is that right here where it says layer one, I want it to pause before it starts cutting away. I want it to wait maybe about 20 or 24 frames. So maybe it'll wait a second. So we'll go to frame 24 here, insert a keyframe, and at this point, we're gonna cut that piece out. So here I am on my selection tool. I'm gonna to cut it out here. And you see I missed a little bit. I'm gonna go forward a tiny bit more. And cut it out. There is the B. I'm gonna go forward about five frames insert a keyframe and cut out the next letter which is A. If I cut away too much which I haven't yet but I'll show you what to do when I do because I'm sure I will insert another keyframe cut that away and don't worry I'm not going to show you the whole thing I'll pause the video there's the end you can see I kind of cut a little bit too much there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to my brush tool shortcuts the letter B and I'm going to change my brush from a round brush to a oops a square brush and the size I'm going to increase that to the largest size possible and I'm just going to draw black right in there now I did a terrible draw job drawing that black but you can do a better job than me there we go so I'm just going to continue like that insert a keyframe five frames forward Go to my move tools, the uh, shortcut is the letter V, like victory, and just cut them out one piece at a time and just keep going until you've done it for that first line. So I'm gonna pause the video 
and I'll come back once I've done that first line otherwise this video will take forever all right welcome back so I just finished that first line here now for the next part I'm going to extend the keyframe a quite a bit I'm gonna go forward maybe about 24 frames or so um, just so that there's a little pause before it does that second line so I just finished the bill and I'm gonna go forward maybe to frame 95 here that should be a good amount and insert a keyframe there so that way there's a little bit of a delay before it starts taking away from that second line and you're just gonna repeat rinse and repeat here I'm gonna erase the uh, second line I got the R go forward five frames insert a keyframe and just continue to delete these letters here and the second letter and then insert a keyframe by the way the shortcut uh, you probably got the hang of it now but the shortcut is uh, F6 to insert a keyframe so in case you were wondering that's how you can do that quickly here's the F and we'll just continue through here and you can do that for the same same procedure for the third line as well and just remember to add a little delay so it doesn't you know run through it too quickly and uh, I'll come back here once we've finished uh, doing that so I'll pause the video and when I'm done I'll come back all right all done so wow that was magic huh so I'm gonna go back here you should have something like this mine was I think about a hundred and or two hundred frames I can't remember but if you press enter you should see this happen you can just imagine right now it's doing the uh, typing sound effect choo -choo 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 -choo. so uh, that's it for that part if I run my movie it's gonna be incomplete because as soon as we run it you'll see the problem right away as soon as I press enter you can see it's all it was already typing and it's gonna repeat itself again so in the next video we'll talk about how to fix that as well but we're making progress I'll see you on the next one